What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Subnautica. My name is Splattercat, very happy to have you here today. So we hang out for a bit and actually give me my battery back. Uh-huh, I see you over here, Charger, trying to steal my battery. Trying to take my shit. I'm on to you. I'm on to you, Charger. You can't fool me. I'm gonna put the creature egg back up in there. In today's episode, we should be getting the sea moth moving as far as I know. It should be something that is readily available. We got deployables here. We need a power cell in order to make that work, which means we're gonna need. Uh, let's. I don't want to. I've got. I feel like I've got the perfect supply of batteries right now. Like the amount of battery in this series is just right. Any more, and it's gonna be too much. However, making some power cells is probably a wise plan. So let's gather up some of these mushrooms over here. And after we got the mushrooms, we're going to need some copper ore. And that's how we're going to start this episode off. We do have copper ore already available, but it's like... You can never have too much copper, because you're going to be using it for a lot of the little electronic things you build throughout the course of your adventures. And believe me when I say, there are going to be a lot of electronics being built, especially once we start upgrading vehicles and stuff like that. Oh my god, the amount of like copper and silver and gold and just random things you need in order to make computer chips and wiring kits and everything like that it's just a lot and so you're better off front stocking it right now instead of back stocking it later I mean either way you're gonna be stocking something so you might as well put on your creepers and you know put your little John Waters mustache on and stock now I hate it when I feel like I have to sneeze in the middle of an episode because then I'm like afraid to talk. You ever notice how when there's a sneeze and it's like hanging out inside of you and it's just like waiting. It's like I'm inside of you and I'm a sneeze. Like when it's inside of you and it's just waiting, like any motion that you do at all like could trigger it. And sometimes it doesn't. And it just sits there for hella long. And then other times it like triggers like instantly like the second it goes through. The human body's a weird thing. It's strange. It's very, very strange. I forgot. Each episode I was supposed to be doing a diary entry, aren't I, for one of the animals. Hmm. Yeah, I should probably do that. Oh, we're full up right now. Okay, I can make do. That's fine. Totally cool by me. This is not the right direction to our base. We gotta go back to our place. It's to the left. It's not to the right. It is daytime. I hope it isn't night. This would be a pretty bright night, though. It's the opposite of Batman. The bright night. Just Batman, but a little smarter. Right now, there's somebody in chat just like, Blasphemy, nobody is smarter than Batman. He always has a plan. That's his superpower, is that he always has a plan. Duh. I want to see how Batman, I don't know, I don't read Batman much anymore. I want to see how Batman interacts with Lex Luthor. Because they're kind of like two sides, they're kind of the same character. Like, if you really think about it, they're kind of the same guy, just on opposite sides. Let's go ahead and titanium up. Granted, Lex Luthor is over in Metropolis. He's not in Gotham with Batman. So, obviously, there's some transfer over things. What's the name of the city where Nightwing lives? There's another city that's, like, right next to Gotham. And Nightwing goes there to protect it because it was convenient for the plot line. And, like, well, he can't be in Gotham because Batman and Robin are already protecting Gotham. So, how many heroes do you need? We've already got enough heroes and anti-heroes just piddling around Gotham doing jack shit nothing. I know. We'll give him another city. And that's precisely what they did. Okay, so we needed batteries. There's one. I'm going to grab some copper ore up out of our... I think it's in our semi-precious stash. And actually, we're going to need all of it. I hate to say this, but we're going to have to use every last bit of our copper to get this done. Because we need four batteries. And then we need some more power cells. And it's just like we need... A lot. It is what it is. So there it is. All the batteries have been converted. Now we're going to need two of those. And then we'll make two of these power cells, which as you can tell are quite a bit larger than the batteries that we already had. These things are essentially barrels full of energy. These are how we're going to power all of our vehicles from here on in. So keep that in mind. Back to what I was saying. We got to get this. Uh, we got to get this machine banged out. Do I already have the lubricant in my inventory? Okay, I do. So we should be able to make this happen pretty easily right here. This is the spot from whence we will craft just about everything that we're going to be building 
in the future and you want to make sure you put this in deep water like I can't express this enough I've actually I've put it in shallower water but when it deploys your vehicle it may destroy it and with the amount of time it takes to farm vehicles sometimes I I just wouldn't take the risk honestly I wouldn't I I've lost entire sea moths and all kinds of stuff to accidents so I would rather not mess with it now if we wanted to get our sea moth we need a titanium ingot we need glass we have the power cell that we need this actually should be fairly easy to gather up everything here is easily achievable so I can make the ingot now I can make the glass now the only thing we're missing is the lubricant I would also I want to pick this thing back up there we go I don't want it to be facing the direction that it's currently facing Nope, I don't want that either. I want it to face out the other direction. Yeah, that works. We flipped it. Cool. That's fine. That that works. But I was going to pick it up and I was going to try and flip it by dropping it the right direction. But you know what? If I can trip over it and make it fall in the direction that I want, that's fine too. A bit of a Gungan solution right there. But hey, whatever. We need an ingot. Must be a big ingot if you can craft an entire, like, submersible out of it. That's got to be like an enormous ingot. All right, so that's done. Now we need lubricant and glass. That should be enough glass to get this done. Luckily, it's not enamel glass. Otherwise, that would be a little bit more of a pain, but that's where these stalker teeth come in. Okay, so we've got the glass. Let's go track down our lubricant. Which has been misplaced somewhere. Normally it's in the sock drawer. For some reason our lubricant has been tangled up in creep vine forests. Ooh, more copper. Yes, please. Could always use some more copper while I'm out and about. Our copper supply has been really, really bad lately. And so I'd like to replenish it. In fact, I would love to replenish it considering... We only really have the one battery for our sea moth. now that I'm thinking about it. Mm. Creep vine forest, where are you? I see a creep vine forest over here. I saw it. It was going up to the top. Creep vine going up from the sea floor. Getting lots of pods and I need more. Creep vine going up from the sea floor. Alright, so I need three of these. There they are. Another copper, which is great. Exactly what I needed right now. I'm hoping that if I can just sort of graze materials as I'm around doing other things, life will be good. That's what I'm thinking, is I just kind of graze. Like, if I see something while I'm already out and about farming and I pick it up, and then I just keep it in storage for a bit, maybe it'll make my life easier down the line. I was going to say, my inventory's got to be getting, like, really, really close to full. There's no way that it's not right now. Let me see if I can maneuver myself back inside my base. We'll craft. There's my little MCV deployment thingy right there, or MVC or whatever you want to call it. I need lubricant, sir. Did I already make the glass? I can't remember. And I would rather not waste it. Okay, so we've already got the glass. Let me store the remainder of this stuff inside of here. So that it be done. Good. Oh, we got a bunch of stuff, actually. In pretty good shape as far as... How is this doing over here? It chews through mushrooms pretty fast, so just be aware. You're going to have to fill it up every now and again. But it doesn't fill up, like, insanely fast. I've got a dead battery around here somewhere, don't I? I don't? Oh, I thought I had a dead battery. Okay. I must not have been swimming around very much. We also need to go and check on our dinner. So let's see how they're doing over here with the uh, fishy love. How's the fishy love going? I can't really tell any difference. Then again, I didn't really take a head count in the first place, so it's probably my fault. I'd say let's be fair. Spread our consumption around a little bit. We'll get like... 
two of one kind and one of another. And then they can continue populating. There is like a max cap on how many things can be inside of there. Because I've noticed they stop breeding after a certain point and it just like stays the same. I, I tried it with larger fish. That's what I noticed it with. However, I do really, really, really like having readily available food. Like, that's a really, really badass thing about alien containment. Makes it so I don't have to swim around like an idiot looking for things to fill my stomach up anymore. Oh, that one's done too. Okay. All batteries ready to go. We should have all of the materials we need in order to make this happen. Kind of facing a weird direction, but you know. All right, Seamaw time. Cool. This is the Seamoth. If you've never seen the Seamoth before, it is a single person submersible that will go down to 200 meters. It also resupplies us with oxygen so that we can go down to 200 meters and then dive even further down from there. It's a very, very useful piece of equipment. Do not lose it lightly. You will probably blow up two to three Seamoths on accident just by running into giant sea creatures that want to kill you. Uh, it's distinctly possible. However, it's a fantastic little piece of equipment and don't underestimate its usefulness. It's pretty good. I like having it around. Now, it's at this point that we would probably want to contemplate looking for the Seamoth dock and a couple of other things. We need to look for the moon pool. There, there's a bunch of stuff that we need to research and scan in order to add it onto our base so that we can fully utilize the Seamoth because the Seamoth is modular. Right now, the Seamoth is like a native Seamoth. There's just there's nothing special about it. However, if we can get the Seamoth dock, we can upgrade this thing and make it more badass. We can give it missiles. We can give it increased armor we can give it increased just like all kinds of stuff we can make it really really good so keep that in mind i don't know what i want to do next because the battery does last a long time on the seamoth greetings computer and so the seamoth is pretty useful for this kind of stuff we probably want to make a welder at some point if we haven't built a welder the Seamoth is going to get damaged, and there's not really a whole lot you can do about it. Like, along the way, it's going to get beat up. My Seamoth takes tons of damage when I play games. Just because you run into fish, and the fish deal damage when you run them over with your Seamoth, it happens constantly. You get a really satisfying whoomp sound, and next thing you know, you're, like, chasing down fish to run them over. Like that one right there. That did 10% damage to our hull. So, you know, that was a demonstration, but... I think this biome, one past the red biome, is where we want to be because, oh, there's a filtration machine fragment, so that's pretty cool. We've actually unlocked the filtration machine now. There's the power cell charger fragment, which is good because we are going to need, oh, it gave it to us instantly. Okay, apparently we have acquired a new, apparently we have acquired a new blueprint. I think there's other stuff over here that I want, though. We need to find... So the biome we need now is there's like a blue biome. Well, not like a blue biome, but it's kind of like a dead kelp forest biome. And it's got the moon pool inside of it. And the moon pool is important because the moon pool allows us to dock our sea moth inside of our base. And then it acts as the highlight point from which we can also upgrade the sea moth once we find the sea moth upgraders. So we're going to need to be careful for right now. Because there are things out here that want to hurt us. And potentially can damage our sea moth. Yeah. We're going to keep it low. And there's a reason for that. We're going to stay low and we're going to try and stay in between these pillars. This is an area where I think there's something nasty. We just need to be careful. The water's kind of foggy and silty. So, shit, I hit another animal. Ten points, I guess. Uh, 
Uh... Oh, that's quartz. I thought maybe it was lithium. Shit. Let's be careful. There's a creature out here that is less than pleasant. And I think there's only one of him, but he is around out here. And chewing up our sea moth would be no problem for him. Like, he would accomplish that like you and I cut a fart. It would just be simple. Like, it's not even a task for him. So I'd watch out for it. I, I would rather not lose my sea moth right now is what I'm saying. What is this right here? Looks like these little nodules might be farmable. Maybe not. It was my hope that maybe this would be some kind of ore node. But no, it actually seems to be some kind of fungus. You can see the ore node over here if you really, really want it. It's just limestone, though, so it's going to be pretty much the standardized stuff we found in the first zone. Hey, there's mercury? Yeah, we need mercury for some stuff later. We don't need it right now, but it will be useful way, way, way later. So we'll just get a couple little pieces of that. Let me jump back in here. That's cool. At least we got... Ooh. Hey, there's lithium. Good shit. We've actually moved up the tech tier now. That's one of the reasons why you kind of want to get a sea moth, is it allow you to get around faster and move up the tech tiers a little bit better without having to go up to the surface for air all the time. And so, three lithium, three mercury. That should be fine for right now. I don't think we need much more of it. If we go back this way, this should take us back to red grass. Hit another fish. That's going to be a little bit more health going. Yeah, and there's red grass right there. So we should be all right. Mostly it's just don't run over spade fish. When you run over spade fish, it seems to deal lots and lots of damage to your vehicle. Damage which, as of right now, we aren't really capable of repairing. I don't know if you've noticed, but... I don't have the materials I need to actually fix this vehicle right now. So I would prefer to keep it pristine if I can. I know where we're going next. It's just going to be a bit of a trip. So buckle on in. I, I think we're going to go look for the moon pool recipe, which is going to be off that way over there. Uh, be careful about jumping out of your sea moth like that when it was in motion. That was a demonstration, but you can get run over by your own sea moth. It's not a good it's not a good plan to murder yourself with your own vehicle. It's a rough one to explain to the in-laws. Alright, so we've got that right there. That should be cool. This locker is basically full up with all the things that I love to have when I'm trying to do my dirt. I love how it auto sorts. It's little things like that that make me fall in love with this game. Battery charger, I need your help. There it is. Uh, Bioreactor is probably about ready to be refueled, but actually what we need to do now is I forgot the next zone is going to be too deep for us. It's just going to be like too deep, man, you know, like those deep thoughts, bro. What we need is a still suit. Would We might need a radiation suit. I don't know. Oh, we haven't picked up the recipe for the upgrader either oh that's not good so the object that we need is a little object called the rebreather the rebreather is important because it allows us we need the welder and we need the cutter the cutter is going to allow us to get inside of crashed spaceships basically loot pinatas uh, yeah, we actually don't have the recipe for the rebreather that I can see. Which leads me to believe that it might possibly be crafted from the upgrade crate. So there's like this magical box you get. And the magical box makes it so that you can upgrade items that you have and also make new stuff. It's useful. You kind of want it. So that leaves us in a bit of a situation right now. I still think I'm going to stick to the plan that we had previously. That is to head towards the Aurora. What's all that shit floating in the air over there? What the hell? It's 
going on over here? Like the universe has lost its mind. Huh? There's debris everywhere, levitating in the sky. Well, who am I to say you can't fly debris? If you want to fly, you go right ahead and you fly. Don't ever let anybody tell you what you can and can't accomplish. It looks like things are somewhat broken over here, though. Which, by the way, is my favorite Pantera song. I like that song. That song goes. That song goes hella hard. Uh, that's an ass kicking song right there. Like if somebody's listening to that song on their earbuds, you definitely don't want to fight them. Like you've got to figure out what music they're listening to. Because apparently that's how fights are determined inside my mind because I already said it. We need to go down maybe to this biome? I think this is red grass. Oh, there's radiation. Okay, so we are going to need a rad suit. I was worried about that, but it looks like it's going to come around. So what we need to do now is run over a few people. You're mine! Vehicular rage! Airsack! Oh, I missed. Running over fish is like 90% of the reason why I played this game. I don't know. My ability to murder fish is pretty awesome. We need to cut some of this shit over here. Gonna need a little bit of creep vine. And this time you're actually gonna harvest off of... Oh, it's from the rebreather. Okay, you're gonna want to harvest... Hey, stop that. You're gonna want to harvest from that spot over there. Now then, we don't want this to get rotten. So we need to find our base beacon, and we got to head back to there. In the meantime, we're out of time for today. In the next episode, we're going to make the lead suit. We're going to make ourselves the rebreather. The rebreather allows us to go down deeper into the ocean all by our lonesome. And you'll notice that if you go down deep into the ocean, your oxygen starts to tick by six seconds instead of three. That's because you don't have a rebreather. You need to have the rebreather. Otherwise, deep pressures will make it difficult for you to maintain your oxygen level. I will see you all in the next episode of Subnautica. If you wanted to get the game for yourself, I do have it down in the description for you. Bye, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow.